Hi, this is Eva for Once Upon a Timeline, and today we're going to talk about how some of the new Mandela Effect creatures may have affected human historical development. Okay, so the first one I want to talk about is here. We were talking about these cordyceps fungus that infect the various insects. You can see here there are many different varieties, and that was in a recent video. And what was brought to my attention on this video by April Renee 22 was that cordyceps are beneficial to humans. And I wasn't sure what she meant, so I looked it up. And good find, April Renee. Thank you for the info. Um, apparently, cordyceps are quite popular in this timeline as a medicinal herb type of deal. Uh, here you can see there on Amazon, cordyceps mushroom extract powder. Um, looks like pretty weird looking image there to me but I guess in this timeline it's just standard uh, here are some images of just general cordyceps um, as a reminder of what they look like and how weird I swear they weren't even this weird the other day but it looks like a lot of them are using the ones from um, underground creatures but I'm not sure I haven't totally investigated every aspect of it but this one does look like a cordyceps that grows on caterpillars six benefits of cordyceps all backed by science so apparently they did do some research on these and they found them to be uh, good for exercise performance anti-aging properties uh, anti-tumor effects uh, man, help manage type 2 diabetes. Apparently it has some kind of insulin-like effect on the bloodstream. Uh, also some potential benefits for heart health. So apparently these fungus go way back in this timeline to ancient Chinese medicine. Uh, we have different fungus in every country just about it looks like. Here is a tincture from the Six Nations Native American Herbal Remedies and Teas. Cordyceps tincture extract although written record of cordyceps sinensis use appeared in traditional chinese medicine centuries ago it wasn't really noticed in the west until recently geez i wonder why the last two decades have seen a great increase in research on cordyceps as a medicinal mushroom so they're going over some of the examples here um anyway at least some of these have some research on them uh, so I'm wondering now, you know, maybe some of these weird things that are coming into our reality may have an upside. Um, these creepy fungus do help control insect populations. And one of the things that I was reading about was that they were saying that whenever insects become uh, too populous, then the fungus will also spread rapidly and control populations. And once the insects become more sparse, then the fungus will have trouble uh, finding new hosts, and there'll be a lot less fungus. So it's kind of a, a limiter on the population of insects. So anyways, uh, maybe, I don't know, maybe this this is actually a benefit to us historically and uh, medicinally. Uh, there does seem to be some research to suggest it. Uh, in addition, this is another ME that I haven't mentioned before, I don't think, and it's called the oak apple or the oak gall. And basically, it's um, if you have oak trees anywhere near you, which I do, they are forming these um, ball-like structures. They're not acorns. They look like smallish apples, or um, they're round like this, generally speaking. They're about this big. And um, they are called oak apples, although you can't eat them. But basically, um, they are caused by chemicals injected by the larva of certain kinds of gall wasp in the family Cynipidae. The adult female wasp lays single eggs in developing leaf buds. The wasp larva feed on the tissue, on the gall tissue resulting from their secretions. So the female wasp lays an egg and then the tree creates this gall thing as a kind of a response to the egg and the secretions. And then the larva of this insect live inside the gall. So basically the larva are hijacking the tree to make them a little home and then they live in it. And once the 
little larvae hatch out and disappear and fly off and then the gall eventually falls to the ground and you can find it under the oak trees. Now I heard about these oak apples about two years ago and I hadn't seen any and I looked around on trees and I was able to find one single gall at that time. Now this year there's tons of them. I have quite a handful um, now at home and I was researching them a tad and it, I just found out that there's actually a lot of uses for these, and you, the people even sell them. The oak galls are one of the highest known natural sources of tannin and have been used uh, in the production of ink since at least the time of the Roman Empire. From the Middle Ages to the early 20th century, iron gall ink was the main medium used for writing in the Western world. I also found that uh, they sell oak gall on... Um, on different places to use as a mordant for dyeing. Basically, a mordant is something that helps the dye stick to fibers that it normally might not stick to. The tannin would stick to the fibers, the tannin from the oak gall would stick to the tie fibers, and then the ink or the dye would stick to the tannin. So it allows them to dye things that are difficult to dye. Uh, so this apparently has quite a number of uses. Uh, in addition here, they are saying oak galls are used in Chinese medicine as a bitter, warm remedy called moshizi, used for dysentery, ulcers, and hemorrhoids, among other things. Also, uh, Native Americans used poultices of ground gall nuts on sores, cuts, burns, etc. Uh, also used as a tincture for diarrhea, cholera, and gonorrhea. And then here they're talking about the high tannic acid content of oak galls make them a good source of dyeing material, as well as tanning. And tanning is what they, uh, how they treat uh, furs off the animal to make them preserved and soft. So tanning materials are very important in the development of any um, human group. So anyways, um, and now they're also saying that oak gall may be a source of natural pesticide that helps control um, some nasty mosquitoes they have in malaria-prone areas. So anyway, um, it's an interesting concept to think that these new Mandela effects are new to me, but have been around for centuries, and they already have all these really neat, um, <laughs> very bizarre looking and very weird picture on the front, um, medicinal herbs that might, according to science, actually be fairly useful. Very strange. Anyway, this is Eva signing off for Once Upon a Timeline.